This is the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 31. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. All right, and that was, you know, bless the names, or shall I say, I was blessing the names of the Heavenly Father in the name of His only begotten Son, right, who this world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. And before I get started, I'm going to turn and face the east towards Jerusalem and give infinite and all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachaha Kodash. All right. Once again, that is who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I've learned this 100% truth and who rules very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head and the elder of the men of Israel camp, the Achazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina, and a healthy, while a hearty shalom to Achiam wa Achwatim, you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling toward your salvation. All right, so y'all say shalom. That's Hebrew for peace. All right, this is the Ach Alayah Ban Yahawada, the brother Elijah, son of Judah. All right, and I'm here with a quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai in these last days for the edification of the elect. All right, when I say the elect, I'm speaking in reference of the chosen Israelites, as you Israelites being the so called black, uh, Hispanic, and Native American Indians. Right? We are the Israelites according to the Bible. And this lesson is for you. All right, I'm gonna see if I can pull up the chart really quickly. You know, edification say, Lord willing, it's not inverted. You know, but as stated before, you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. And as you can see by the title of this lesson being, Yahweh will not acquit the wicked. You know, without too much else to say, let's hop right back into the scriptures and Abaratzah. Lord willing, this is edifying, right? So this is Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 31. It reads, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, you know? And I forget what that grammatical, you know, punctuation represents. It's two dots, one above the other. Uh, but it, it represents a, a pausing, right? So we can really pause right here and address what we've read and, and said already. Because it's a, it's a heavy point. Because you'll have, you know, before we, you know, get into it really quickly, you'll have non-believers or people who don't hold the Bible as truth, you know, who follow the philosophies and the ways of this world. You'll have people come and say, no, the righteous don't exist and there is not a recompense unto them, you know, which is a false ideology, a false belief, a wrong thought, a, a filthy and wicked lie, even if you will, you know. Because ultimately, according to the scriptures, and even via the Rachachodash, the Holy Spirit, you know, we understand that the righteous do exist. You know, the righteous have dwelt in the earth and are continue, continue, are still, you know, within the earth. And even uh, there is a recompense that is awaiting them. You know, so let's read this again, Proverbs 11 and 31. Behold. The righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. And that word recompense ultimately going into, you know, a, a paying back, you know, ultimately a reward, something that you have earned based upon your works, right? Uh, which that, that word in the Hebrew, the strongest H7999 is shalom, right? Which in the outline of biblical usage means to be in a covenant of peace, to be at peace. And that's ultimately the fruits of righteousness, man. Peace will be brought out and established uh, within the earth via these righteous individuals. You know, starting with our Lord Yahweh Shai being the head, right? Being our, our leader. You know, like the scriptures even call him our forerunner, right? It says in the latter half of Proverbs 11 and 31, much more the wicked and the sinner, right? Let's read this in the NLT, right? This is Proverbs 11 and 31 in the NLT, if the righteous are rewarded here on earth, 
what will happen to wicked sinners, right? Beautifully spoken, well said, you know. So with the point being, you know, once again, as the title being, Yahweh will not acquit the wicked, we understand that the judgments and the rewards for the righteous and the judgments and the reward for the wicked, they, they pretty much go hand in hand, you know, because they cancel out each other. You know, if there's going to be a righteous judgment, that means the righteous are within the earth and, you know, their judgment is ultimately going to, you know, s supersede, you know, the wicked, you know, and with the wicked, or should I say with the righteous being in rulership, that means that judgment must come to the wicked, you know, so we understand, as I said, I'm going to read it one more time, that the righteous are rewarded here on earth, right, which is speaking prophetically in reference even to salvation, deliverance, right, a redemption from the current captivity, bondage in hell, the Israelites, you know, are, are held and under subjection to, under the Edomites, which is the biblical name and nationality, for the so-called self-proclaimed white men, women, and children, right? You're right, we understand that their deliverance has been prophesied, which means their kingdom also must come, which is via our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? Which Yah, meaning he, Yahweh Shai, meaning deliverer, redeemer, you know, that is what he exists to be for the Israelites. So if the righteous are rewarded here on earth, what will happen to wicked sinners? And let's get into it. You know, uh, I actually want to start off with, matter of fact, mm, before I go here, let me get Galatians 6 and verse 7. All right. Build a foundation here. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, it says, be not deceived as the majority of this world actually is believing in lies, hearkening uh, unto to false ideologies you know, uh, wicked beliefs, uh, uh, calling on the name of Jesus the Christ, right? <laughs> the scripture said, be not deceived, man. Because in the name of Jesus the Christ, they'll tell you that it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you believe in, you know, as long as you come and profess that Jesus is the Christ, you will be saved, right? The Bible says, Galatians 6 and 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So look, if you sown rape, robbery, and murder, which when you look at the track record of the Edomites, that's all that they have sown in the earth. That that's pretty much their um, uh, resume. You know, that's their their laundry list of works: rape, robbery, and murder, lies, wickedness. You know, <laughs> it, it, it continues on, man. Everything that the, the scriptures condemn, the Edomites have have basically engaged in and promoted as life, you know, which is truly death. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if you haven't sown life, you're not going to reap everlasting life, right? If you sown everlasting death, that's what you're going to reap ultimately. You know, that's what the scriptures have prophetically revealed, even upon the Edomites, right? Which the judgment of slavery is not limited to only Edomites, man. The judgment of slavery, you know, it, it can be passed, that cup can be passed unto anybody, which we understand even the Israelites themselves who were set up not to drink of the cup, you know, of believing in false doctrines and ultimately going off and worshiping idols and then being put in slavery. You know, the Israelites truly, they weren't set up to, to endure that yet through the spirit of prophecy, through the will of the heavenly father being revealed we understand they had to be that was a part of the lord's purpose his his movie if you will you know but ultimately it was not to consume them it wasn't to have them destroyed the heavenly father exists to be a deliverer you know a guide and a power of life unto the israelites so that means that all of their enemies you know they must needs be destroyed it's it's, it's for them to drink of that cup of oppression you know which when the kingdom of heaven is established it will be a righteous kingdom it will be a kingdom that fulfills the law such as the commandments of the heavenly father yahweh yah meaning he hawa meaning to be to exist you know the existing one you know for that's the, the name of the heavenly father he is right and and he is the one who purposed the kingdom of heaven to be brought out and established in the earth after the ordinance that already has existed in the heavens man you know, uh, through our Lord Yahweh Shai, that kingdom is going to be brought into the earth. And we're going to be able, uh, granted a dominion and a rulership over our enemies, man. Which proves that, you know, basically what you sow is what you will reap. Our Lord Yahweh Shai had to come 
in the likeness of, of righteousness, or shall I say, he was righteous. You know, he is even righteous to this day. You know, he came not not transgressing any law to be a worthy sacrifice unto us to make us righteous through faith in him. Right. <laughs> That's why we understand that there are righteous men in the earth, even in these last days, man. Like the scriptures say, when the heavenly father comes, shall he find peace in the earth, uh, faith in the earth. So like, y'all, excuse me, forgive me for that. You know, when, you know, when the Lord comes, shall he find faith in the earth? You know, the answer truly is yes, but amongst his elect, right? Which in comparison to the the entire scope of the world, all the people that dwell in the earth, it's, it's, it's a remnant. It's a few. It's not the majority, which is why the majority of the world doesn't even believe that the wicked <laughs> um, aren't going to be acquitted. If they look out into the world right now, you see the Edomites, they're in the power seat. You, you look at the Edomites, they look like... They, they have the glory of the kingdoms, man. You know, you look at the Edomites, they, they seem like God and his people, you know, let, let them tell it. They are the holy, they're the chosen, right? But that's far from the truth, right? Let's actually, let's get this. Let's go to Nahum chapter one, All right? And this, let me see. Yeah, this is a, a, exactly where I get the, the uh, a quote from the title of uh, the title from as uh, a quote from this scripture right Nahum chapter 1 and we're going to start at verse 1 and read on down it says the burden of Nineveh the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkashite it says in verse 2 and I'm going to read it verbatim God is jealous and the Lord revengeth the Lord revengeth and is furious the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. All right, so I know that might sound like a lot, you know, but really... You know, the scriptures that are just revealing the spirit uh, of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, man. He's a God that delights in righteous judgment. He's a God that will not at all acquit the wicked. And we're going to get into this. Matter of fact, let me pull up Nahum chapter 1 in the blue letter. All right. You know, because once again, looking at America from the outside, looking in, looking at America from the carnal perspective, which is how this world views these things naturally, carnally. You know, they don't think spiritually. They don't, precepts and scriptures don't come to their mind when they look out into the world and see what's going on out in the world. That's why they're hopeless. That's why they're careless when it comes to the judgments that the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh has prophesied to come upon the earth. That's why they don't give a damn, right? Although, like the, the Spirit had the brothers mention, uh, uh, although, or, or shall I say, I think the title is, the Bible is written for the prophets, although everyone has one, right? Although the Bible is everywhere, it's easily accessible. Although the truth is being declared on Instagram, on live streams, on on lessons, you know, alive in action on the street corners, on the highways and, and, and hedges, you know. Although the word is out there, nobody truly knows the spirit of Yahweh and, and his mind, how he judges, what he desires, you know, to play out in the earth. Nobody knows these things. That's why the scriptures say he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets, you know. And the prophets have revealed what? Nahum 1 and 2. Yahweh is jealous, right? The Lord, Yahweh, our God, he's a jealous God, right? It says, and the Lord, Yahweh, revengeth, right? So he delights in revenge. You, you don't have a lot of Christianity believers that say, you shouldn't want revenge. You know, you shouldn't want vengeance. Man, th these are the attributes of the Heavenly Father, which the Bible in Exodus chapter slipped my mind but the scriptures say in exodus what yahweh is a man of war yahweh is his name right so the heavenly father he doesn't think like your average edomite your, your self-proclaimed white men women and children uh he doesn't think like the average so-called negro he doesn't think like like the these uh people out here in the world man the heavenly father his thoughts are higher than the heavens man as the heaven is higher than the earth so are his thoughts higher than our thoughts 
you know, and his wisdoms that he has, it reveals that he must bring righteous judgment into the earth, which begins with his revenge upon his enemies, right? Let's read it again. Nahum 1 and 2. Yahweh is jealous. The Lord Yahweh revenges. So it's the Heavenly Father's revenge that we're speaking about, that we're proclaiming unto all the nations, right? It says, the Lord Yahweh revengeth and is furious. You know, he's pissed off with what's been going on going on out here in the earth. And the scriptures say, I was only a little displeased, yet they forwarded the affliction. And that was in reference to the Edomites ruling over the apple of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai's eyes, which are the Israelites, chiefly his chosen man. You know, which is the elect amongst the Israelites, you know, because the majority of them pursuant to biblical prophecy, they they don't care about the Lord and his judgments either. They have made themselves a, a league with our enemies, you know, so the Lord has likened unto them. The Lord has likened them unto his enemies, man. You know, the two thirds pursuing Zechariah 13, the majority of Israel, 66.6666, you know, percent of the Israelites are set up to be consumed and destroyed on this side, you know, right along with the Edomites, man, here in America, Babylon the Great. As it says, the Lord Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Let's get some of these words in the Hebrew, right? I'm gonna grab adversaries, you know. This is the word adversaries. Uh, Strong's H6862, right? Tazar, Tazar, right? Which the outline of biblical usage, the third example is an adversary, a foe, an enemy or oppressor, you know? And ultimately, even if you're not an Israelite, you know, you oppress us, you know, yes, starting back with the history, you know, through, through hardcore bondage and slavery in the past, you know, but you also oppress us even to this day, like the scriptures say, you know, they oppress a man, even a man in his heritage. None of the nations, none of the, none of the other nations, even the Edomites, tell us who we truly are. You know, they, they keep the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of who the Israelites are to themselves, although they know who we are, man. Because truly, once we return and remember who we are and who our God is chiefly, first and foremost, you know, because it's through acknowledging who our God is that our, I, that our identities are revealed. You know, by returning unto the Creator. You know, once once we return unto our Creator and realize who He's called and chosen us to be, hey, it, it, it's it. You know, scriptures say that that's when you know once this gospel has been preached and once the elect are sealed, then these judgments are gonna come. You know, which you know all that takes place by the preaching and teaching of the Bible, the 100% truth. Right? The strong definition of Tazar in the Hebrew, the strong definition is. An opponent, right? It says adversary. It says, let me see, enemy, a foe. You know, so you guys get the point. It also goes into tribulation and trouble, you know? So the Lord is going to render tribulation and trouble unto those who have troubled him and brought tribulation unto him via his people, you know? As you do unto the Lord's people, you do unto him. The Lord takes that personally, how, how you, you know, deal with his servants, man. As it says, Nahum 1 and 3, the Lord Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, is slow to anger and great in power. And that's why you don't see these judgments now. For one, the Heavenly Father is subject unto his own words, his own prophecies, you know, but also he's he's merciful, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All of the elect, all those who the Lord has set up to be delivered, they have to hear this gospel and be sealed, have to have that word sealed in their minds. That way they can have hope and trust in, in the Lord's words, you know, starting with the fact that the Heavenly Father has sent our Lord, Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son in the earth for us to suffer for us, man, that he could return and be that same deliverance unto us, man. You know, that's where our faith begins. Like the scriptures say, he is the author and finisher of our faith. It says the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked let's get this word acquit right this is acquit strong's h 5352 and it's the hebrew word naqua naqua right 
which in outline of biblical usage says to be empty, to be cleared, to be pure, to be free, to be innocent, right? So ultimately, the Lord is not going to allow the wicked who are done wickedly to go uh, and, and be conformed and changed into innocence, man. They're not going to be, you know, what they have done is not going to go unnoticed, man. Because once again, you'll have people like the Christianity Church and whatever other religions y'all claim to believe in that says peace, love, and many blessings, right? But not in the truth. Especially Christianity, they'll tell you that it doesn't matter what you've done, you can come in the name of Jesus the Christ, and the God of Jesus the Christ is gonna forgive you. Man, that's not in the Bible, man. It's not at all in the Bible. The scripture just said the Lord will not at all acquit the wicked, right? And this this goes over a, a Christianity believer's head because they'll, they'll say no, but but grace, okay. Well, what about this scripture? What about all these other scriptures we're about to grab? You know, what about you know <laughs> what the prophets have spoken? Great judgment coming unto the earth. What about these things? Is the Heavenly Father a liar? Or are you a liar? You know? Deal with these things. It says, uh, in the Strong's definition, it says, to be bare. Right? To acquit, meaning to be blameless, to cleanse, to be guiltless, to, to be innocent. It says... To leave unpunished. You see that? <laughs> None of the wicked are gonna go unpunished, man. Matter of fact, let I me mean, make sure I got let me grab that real quick. You know. Uh, right, as it just said, unpunished is, is an understanding that we get from reading that. The scriptures do acknowledge Esau Edom as those who will not go unpunished, although they believe they will, right? Let me finish the verse because I don't think I finished it. Yeah. Okay, so Nahum 1 and 3, it reads, The Lord Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Matter of fact, who are the wicked? We're going to deal with that as well. It says the Lord Yahweh, matter of fact, I'll just tell you as we're reading, it's, it's the Edomites, man. It's really, it, 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 it's, it's not a, um, what should I say? It's not that hard to see, you know, if you're spiritual and if you're obedient to the Heavenly Father. It's not at all hard to see who the wicked are when they make it obvious. You know, they hide it not, like the scriptures say, you know. The scriptures say, the Lord Yahweh, Nathan 1 and 3 at the latter half, the Lord Yahweh hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Because ultimately, you know, for those of y'all who can't receive it, when our Lord Yahweh shall return, he's going to even return in the clouds, man. He's going to return with the clouds in great glory. And all shall see him, like the scriptures say. He's going to come in that fathership, the biggest cloud of them all, which is an AKA, which AKA is a chariot or the clouds of heaven, like the scriptures call them. You guys refer to them as UFOs or, or IFOs. UFO meaning unidentified flying objects or UAPs, right, which is a new term, meaning unidentified aerial phenomena, right? The Bible identifies them as the clouds, the clouds of heaven, the chariots of Israel. Our Lord Yahweh Shah is going to return in those clouds to render judgment unto the wicked, right? The Edomites, who their current stronghold, their current chief kingdom here in the earth is Babylon the Great, according to the Bible, which aka is America. You know, Babylon, Babal in the Hebrew meaning confusion, and America, going back to the word Amerigo, Amerigo which means bitter. You know, <laughs> the Edomites, whenever they've been uh, given liberty to get abroad and to do as they please, nothing but iniquity is multiplied, man. You know, so we understand the Lord sees this. The Lord sees how they're destroying the earth, cutting down all the, the forests, you know, how they're polluting the ozone layer, you know, how, how they're, you know, uh, forwarding uh, global warming, as they call it, you know, as they are, are polluting all the oceans as as uh, the foods that we eat that we eat are tainted you know got gmos all type of forever chemicals and all other type of things in it you know slowly but surely killing off the populace you know and all these sounds like conspiracy theories but this is even what the scriptures identify as going on in the earth how the earth languishes you know, I believe I'm conflating two scriptures together. But ultimately, uh, what the scriptures say, what the earth will grow weaker in age. Let me make sure I'm quoting these scriptures right, man. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, look how second Ezra 14 and 17. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age, right? As time goes on, as time unfolds, the earth, the world, right? Which the earth has grown weaker in age, which even applies to the people, man. You know, because what? We are of the earth. We came from the earth. We are made of the dust of the ground, right? So as the earth is uh, is growing weaker and weaker through time, being corrupted and destroyed, you got uh, oil being taken out of the earth at a rapid rate, right? Which can be likened unto like the blood flow of the earth. You know how all the the soils and everything get its nourishment from. You know, the Edomites are taking the, the blood out of the earth, man. You know, which is causing earthquakes, you know, famines in diverse places. All these things are attached to each other, right? One one plague that's in the earth, you know, or should I say, uh, um, what are they called? Natural disasters. Those things are connected. They're results of what the earth is suffering at the hands of the, uh, the improper rulership, man. You know, it says, Second Ezra 14 and 17, For look how much the world shall be weaker through age, so much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. And we're seeing that. We're living in the times where Jacob's trouble it, it, it is stirring up, man. <laughs> As iniquity increases, increases, many evils are increasing upon those that dwell in the earth, that dwell in the world, man. Which, like I just said, Jacob's trouble. That's really the time period where the scriptures identify as the peak or the climax, especially for the Israelites, man. The Israelites are going to be suffering, you know, chiefly here in America at the hands of the Edomites, the wicked, the enemies of Israel, right? Which Malachi is going to go to, but there's no need. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4 tells you who the wicked are, who the border of wickedness is. It's the Edomites, man. You know? Let me see. I don't want to grab. Oh, yeah. The white y'all about to shot. I'm punished. Right? This is. Right? Because the Edomites, <laughs> hey, as this topic is going into, I know I'm making, you know, a few random points here and there, but the topic being the Edomites, with the Edomites being the topic, there is nothing that. Uh, we can bring up that they have done that the Lord is going to ignore or, or or it's just like, yeah, I seen that, but I don't really care about that. No, the scriptures say, you know, whatsoever a man soweth, whatever it is, that is what he's going to reap. The Lord is going to require that unto him. Right. This is Jeremiah chapter 49. I want to get straight to the point. It says. All right, here we go. I'm going to start at verse 12. Just get straight to the point. It says, Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 12. Matter of fact, I'll start at verse 10. <laughs> and I would start at 9, but I'm going to start at verse 10. All right, it says, but I have made Esau bear. All right, and the Lord is ultimately making Esau bear. You know, Esau being the forefather of the Edomites. The Edomites being the children of Esau, which once again today, they're the self-proclaimed white men, women, and children. The Lord is making Esau bear through prophecy. Through prophecy, by us prophesying, right? Pro prophecy, right? Pro meaning before, uh, facai meaning to say, you know, prophecy, prophesy, ultimately one and the same, to say before. The Lord has his men revealing the judgments that are going to come to pass in the earth before they happen, which is, it reveals, you know, um, the characters of the story. You know, when the Lord says that certain things are going to happen to certain people, it reveals not only the lot, what reason the Lord has created those particular people, you know, but it also reveals who those people are according to the Heavenly Father's eyes, not what they call themselves, right? Not what they feel they are today, you know, because Esau, you know, they also got that doctrine. You can wake up tomorrow and although you are an African today, you can be a Chinese man tomorrow, right? You can wake up today, although you're an Edomite today, you can be an Israelite tomorrow. Right? Which means that although you're a so-called white person, you can be a so-called black person. No, man. You you wake up today, although you're a man, tomorrow you can be a woman. Right? You you can think that you think today only uh sex is between a man and a woman, but tomorrow you can think it's between a woman and a woman, or a man and a man, or multiple men and multiple women. You know, this is their philosophy, these are their mindsets. You can easily look out into the world and see that this is what they believe. You know, but this is contrary to the scripture. The Lord said Esau is being made bare, and it's ultimately by the truth being declared. The Lord's lifting up the skirt on his whore, and everybody's gonna see these Edomites, these 
quote unquote Americans for the damn devil that the Bible has called them, right? Jeremiah 49 and 10. And the word devil is not a spooky word. It just means deceiver in the Greek, man. Diablos, right? Jeremiah 49 and 10. But I have made Esau bare, which means naked, uncovered. It says, I have uncovered his secret places, which, which includes his groves, his, his secret, you know, where they go to have these elite meetings and, set, uh, you know, settings where they commune and plot against the, the righteous, right? Pursuant to even Psalms 83, you know, you even had that, that boxer, you know, I forget his name right now, but that boxer that's speaking up about what went on at the, you know, Bohemian Grove. I believe that's what, what he, you know, spoke on, you know, about how the elites were doing all type of satanic rituals and, and busting down little children in front of them, had them tied up. You know, hey, the Lord ultimately has, you know, even those things being addressed. Why? Because we're living in the time where the son of perdition, the man of sin is being revealed. The scripture said, but I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places and he shall not be able to hide himself. You see that? No matter what he tries to do, taking these videos down, you know, uh, threatening to lock us up, threatening to kill us. There's nothing that he can do that can stop him from being revealed as the damn devil that the Bible speaks of. The wicked of the earth. The ones who are bringing in death, rape, robbery, and murder at, at a, a, an uncharted rate. It's only one nation of people, man. You know, it says, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors, and he is not. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. This is the point. Verse 12, for thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. You know, and that cup going into the philosophies, the wine of Babylon, you know, the wine that she forced the other nations to drink. You know, even the Israelites, the chosen of Yahweh, his people have drunken of the cup. You know, and been deceived and confused. They don't know left from right anymore. They don't know good from evil anymore. They don't know up from down anymore. You know, they can't tell a man from a woman anymore. You know, they're drunken of that cup. As the scripture said, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. The Israelites have drunken it. It says, and are thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Are you going to be the one, the, the one nation that the Lord allows to go scot-free without receiving judgment? Let's see what the Bible says. Thou shalt not go unpunished. Wow. So we see this. So you see this? The Lord said Esau eat him. And it's like, yeah, man, this, this is a uh, necklace the brother made for me. It's like, yeah, I was shot the brother out, but can't think of his, um, his IG handle. But a brother made this, you know, necklace for me. You know, shout out that beloved brother. He knows who he is. And they made his necklace for me, but the clasp uh, slips here and there sometimes, so it might fall. But I'm going to guess what? Put it right back on. Let me see. But as, hey, once again, as people will try to say, no, slavery, that was in the past. We, we're not going to pay for that. Or that was our ancestors. I didn't do that. I didn't put you in chains. Or the Lord didn't give a damn. <laughs> the Lord said, <laughs> which truly, you know, you are your ancestors coming back in the regeneration if you can't receive that. But ultimately, man, the Lord doesn't care what you say or how you feel about his judgment. The Lord requires that which is past, right? So it says, thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it, right? So you see that? It's a fact. The Lord said he's not going to acquit the wicked. You shall surely drink of it. You know, you're going to receive the fruits of your own doings. Let's prove that. Let's go to, matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 13 while I'm here. Beautiful scripture. Jeremiah 49 and 13. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, Yahweh. Right? So he's not going back on this. He swore. Just like he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that he would be a God to their descendants forever and ever. This is the same exact way the Lord said he sworn by himself, saying, Jeremiah 49 and 13, For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra, right, which was the chief uh, capital city in Edom, so we, we understand what the Lord is talking about now, the chief capital city of Edom today is America. Look at it. 
you know look at the glory that it represents the earth compared to the other nations they they flaunt themselves as being a first world country and reality is really a third world country if not worse than that you know i forget exactly the the, the meanings of first and third world but i know first world is supposed to be advanced modern civilization where everything and everybody is living in a kuna matata you know and then you got the third world which is supposed to be the slums the, the poor wretched people you know no america is a third world country man don't don't get it twisted and the lord said that basra it says for i sworn by myself saith the lord that basra shall become a desolation right and we don't see that now right but we will see it very soon in the near future the lord is gonna allow america to be made desolate right how is the lord gonna allow this city this place that's built up with all these monuments and skyscrapers and grand you know capital buildings and your your, your, your great white house how is the lord gonna allow this land with all these things in it be desolate where is it all gonna go the bible prophesies of thermal nuclear destruction it, it it's a it's a it's a method, should I say, that we haven't seen before in the days of old, where an entire civilization, an entire nation of people's, you know, land is going to be ultimately destroyed, all of it, and never inhabited again. This is what the Lord promised to come upon America, which we're going to see shortly come to pass at the climax of World War III, which is also prophesied in the Bible. This is that same time period the Lord is speaking on, right? It says that Basra shall become a desolation a reproach a waste and a curse right the lord has promised a curse to come upon this this land this this lot of the earth right which is north america you know and, and you know chiefly north america right babylon the great you know it says it shall become a desolation a reproach a waste and a curse and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste all right, let's get that word perpetual. Jeremiah 49, 13. Right, which perpetual literally means unending. It's, it's, it's never gonna not be a wasteland, but for edification's sake, I'll grab it. Right, right, which once again means America is gonna be turned into a no man's land, right? Although people have lived here for many, many years, you know, not that long, but you know, although people have lived here for many years, the Lord's going to make this part of the earth desolate forever, right? This is the Hebrew word ayalam, ayalam, right? Which in the, outline, in the outline of biblical usage means a long duration, a long period of time, antiquity, right? Futurity, meaning even through a future, right? Let me see this really quickly, right? Right, which antiquity, I just looked it up. Antiquity just means a great age, a great time period, right? It says futurity, forever, ever, everlasting, ever more perpetual, right? Of old. It says forever and always. So you see that? It's without end. The Lord said he's going to make this place, <laughs> America, a, a desolate land forever and ever, right? Now let's go to Revelation chapter 13. I, I gotta get this. I gotta get this. Cause we're talking about the Edomites, the wicked works, and how the Lord is, is gonna require it, right? This is Revelation chapter 13. Some of the, the beloved brothers' favorite scriptures, man. Revelation chapter 13 and verses 9 and 10 it says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So this is what the saints are patiently and faithfully waiting for, man. This is what we're suffering for, to, to see those that have led us into captivity go into captivity, which means the Lord meant what he said. Whatsoever a man sowed or soweth, that shall he also reap. That's what he's going to receive. He enslaved the Israelites, okay, since the Lord is balanced and righteous and perfect, the Israelites are going to get to enslave them, right? Let's get this also, Revelation 18, since we're in Revelation, might as well. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4, right, starting at verse 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven 
saying, come out of her, my people. And really, you can start up, you know, it, it uh, uh, mentions that this is talking about Babylon the Great up early in the chapter. But we're going to get straight to the points. It says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Right. Which is spirit of Yahweh, Shai, communing to the elect, ultimately gathering them up out of Babylon the Great. So what? That they don't receive the plagues that the Lord promised. Thermonuclear fire. It says, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Because the Lord has promised to send plagues upon this place. We just read it. To leave it desolate. Thermonuclear fire. You know, multiple thermonuclear missiles detonating here simultaneously is going to send a, a, a wall of fire. Literally. A uh, besom, you know, when you go into that word besom, like the scriptures in Isaiah, I believe, goes into a besom of destruction. You know, that word besom goes into a sweeping, you know, a sweeping sense to, to just sweep across the whole land. It's going to be like a wall of fire just melting things in its past from that explosion. You know, boom, you know, mushroom cloud, you know, walls of fire spreading out, melting things before it even touches them. You know, this is what the Lord prophesied and promised to come upon Babylon the Great. And the Lord, through preaching and teaching of the 100% truth, the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, the elect are being awakened. They're being comforted by these good words and they're receiving them with faith, you know, and trusting and hoping in the names of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, to bring these judgments and deliverance unto them and to reward their enemies. It says Revelation 18 and 5, for her sins, for the sins of, Amer of America, Babylon the Great, have reached unto heaven, right? There's so many. You 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 don't even want to count them all, but you can see it, it's a list that, hey, you just keep going. You know, think of it in a, an imaginary sense. You know, once again, you got to put yourself into these scriptures and see these words, man, as the prophets have been likened unto seers or visionaries. You know, these words that we speak, we don't just read them like robots off of a page line one verse one no we actually get into it because the spirit is, is communicating with us and we can actually see these words we can see these judgments coming to pass man you know which is the power of the holy spirit man it says revelation 18 and 5 for her sins have reached unto heaven and yahweh bahasham yahweh shai hath remembered her iniquities so no they're not gonna go unnoticed no the heavenly father has not fallen asleep no he hasn't uh, died. No, he hasn't went on vacation. You know, and left the Edomites in charge. No, man. The Lord Yahweh Bashmi remembered all of the Edomites' iniquities, even from the days of old, when they said, "Raise it, raise it." You know, leave it in ruins, even destroy it to the foundation thereof, man. The Lord remembered that, man. The 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 land of Israel being polluted, as He looks into there now and can still see. We're living in the times of the Gentiles where our land is to be trodden down of the Gentiles. The Israelites are not in their land ruling the earth in righteousness. No, they've been scattered amongst the four winds, amongst the four corners of the earth, scattered amongst all nations under the heavens, even here in America. And they're suffering the curses of Deuteronomy 28. You know, as the Lord prophesied, what come to pass if they transgressed his word, if they forsook his commandments and, and liked other gods above him, Jesus the Christ, Buddha, uh, Muhammad, right? Um, you know, shoot, uh, these celebrities out here selling their souls for fame, your NBA young boy, you know, and all, all these other, you know, young MAs and uh, Lil Nas X and, and uh, Sukiana and Sexy Red, all these people, you know, all these celebrities that they follow and promote and extol to the clouds, you know, whatever they say in a song or whatever they say in an interview. They eating it up and they doing it, man. Yeah, the Lord sees how he's giving his people up over to vanity. And they have suffered the curses under the hands of their enemies. And the Lord is going to, um, you know, once again, judge or should I say, bring a recompense, a payback unto all of the works that have been done in the earth. Even those of his people who have hearkened unto the gospel and repented. The Lord is going to bring a judgment unto any and everybody, no matter who you are right it says revelation 18 and 6 reward her this is the lot of the saints this is the blessing and the inheritance of the elect israelites man 
reward her even as she rewarded you right so this is payback you know how people say in the world you know let me get my lick back you do something to them let them do it unto you let them get their lick back yeah the lord is going to give his saints his elect his chosen their lick back man up upon all their enemies right it says reward her so like y'all says reward her even as she rewarded you all right it says reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works so she rewarded us america these edomites these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing <laughs> they are nothing in the eyesight of the heavenly father they've rewarded us wickedness times two Iniquity times two. They rewarded us with evils times two. The Lord said, reward her as she rewarded you. So we're going to be able to execute righteous judgment upon them based upon their actions toward us. Which means they led us into slavery. We get to enslave them. You know, which is, once again, it's not a spooky thing. It's not a, a oh my God, they're talking about slavery. We're tired of slavery. You can't be tired of slavery because you go to work every day. You know, that's literally the definition of a servant you work for someone else right so the fact that the israelites are having to work for the heathens who are nothing in the eyesight of the lord who are you know beneath them pursuant to uh, deuteronomy 7 and 6 and other various scriptures that speak the same truth you know the, the lord is gonna balance out the tables allow the israelites to receive their inheritance and they're gonna get to establish their dominion over all the nations over all the people right All right. This is what the Lord promised them. It says, reward her, Revelation 18 and 6, reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her double. So y'all gave us double, we get to give you four. For example, you gave us two, we give you four. You know, that's what the Lord basically explained. And all this is going to be able to come to pass within that 1,000 years, man. You know, as the scriptures have revealed, the, the nations live not again. To after the thousand years were, were finished. Lucy paraphrased it, man. You know, that was the matter of fact. What, what book is that? I know it's Revelation, but uh, right, going into the millennial reign of our Lord Yahweh Shai is 1,000 years, right? Revelation 20 and 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection, right? So you see that the Lord has promised dominion and righteous judgment unto his elect his chosen the israelites it says in the cup which revelation 18 and 6 at the latter half and the cup which she hath filled filled to her double right as they rewarded us lies and deceit and falsehood we get to tell them nothing but wisdom knowledge and understanding truth which is that they are the basis of men they are beneath us man you know even much more when we are righteous they are much more beneath us man you know, and, and the Lord promised that in the kingdom of heaven, everything will be set straight, man. Even the nations after, there we go again. <laughs> Even the nations after, you know, that 1,000 years, they're going to be uh, allotted the liberty to go back into their homelands, man, to go back into their places. But they're still going to have to be uh, held into subjection under the law, statutes, and commandments. They're still going to have to obey the Israelites, man. You know, but the Edomites... The, the, the ones who the Lord has cursed beyond all nations, the Lord has said after this a thousand years that they, they ultimately get to be done away with you know, completely. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord Yahweh has spoken it, man. That's in the book of Obadiah. Go and read it and be edified, all right? We're going to wrap it up here pretty shortly, but I want to grab these last couple of scriptures. This is Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 7. It says, deliver thyself, O Zion, right? Which is to Zion in the Hebrew, meaning a monument or a memorial, speaking about the Israelites and righteousness through them in the earth even, right? Referring to the kingdom of heaven. So deliver thyself, O Zion, right? Which even added, the kingdom of heaven starts with the people before it's a place or a city, man. So that's why it says deliver thyself. It's talking to the elect. And how did the elect deliver themselves? By hearkening and, and, and listening and believing upon the 100% truth, the gospel according to the Bible, right? Which is that our, our redemption cometh not from 
the multitude of, of horses and chariots, you know, our, our deliverance come via Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, right? And trusting in their name even, right? Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. And once again, this is how we know this is not talking about no ancient Babylon, man. It's not talking about, you know, Nebuchadnezzar when he ruled. Because we, we read in the scriptures how that kingdom, you know, ended and, and what happened after that. It wasn't left desolate. It wasn't melted with thermonuclear fire. The Lord Yahweh Shai didn't come in the, in the clouds of heaven to bring a deliverance. You know, no, none of that has happened yet. We understand that this prophecy is in reference to the daughter of Babylon, which is ref in reference to America. This kingdom, the final kingdom in which the Israelites will have to suffer slavery, right? The scriptures say we need deliverance from the daughter of Babylon. And that's what we're crying for now in these last days, deliverance. Baba Kasha Yahweh Shai, you know, Redeem us, deliver us from the hands of our enemies. And it says in verse 8, For thus saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. You know, so we've been spoiled by these other nations. And the, the Lord has seen it, <laughs> you know. Our, our Lord Yahweh Shai, he's seen it. He suffered for it, even at the hands of the Romans, which are Edomites, you know, as well. Over 2,000 years ago when the Edomites were ruling in Rome, he, he had to suffer, you know, the crucifixion at their hands, man. Of course, he was delivered up by the Israelites, but it was via biblical prophecy. Like the Lord Yahweh Shai said, they know not what they do, you know. But the Edomites, hey, man, they, they pierced our Lord, man. They crucified him. And, and so he suffered even at the hands of these nations, the, the heathen. And the scriptures say in Zechariah 2 and 8 at the latter half, for he that toucheth you touches the apple of his eye you see that so the heavenly father is going to require everything that his children the apple of his eye you know which is a reference to the beauty you know something that you admire above all the rest right the the, the center of your attention you know the lord said whoever touches the israelites touches the apple of his eye man you think he's not going to see that if his eyes are constantly and always beholding his children, you know, you don't you don't think he sees how he suffers at the hand, how they suffer at the hands of their enemies. He suffers because of that. He's grieved in the spirit, as the scriptures say. The scriptures say he is angry with the wicked every day, you know. So he that touches us touches the apple of the Lord's eye. And he is going to require that, at, you know, at your hands, man, you know. This is Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 18. And we'll end it with this, man. Isaiah 59 and 18. It says, according to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands, he will repay recompense. And that, that word islands, you know, the, the, the nations, the people, they're likened unto, unto lands, you know, mountains even, you know, as... Governments are likened unto mountains, you know, summits being the highest peak. That's where the elites gather. You know, they have summit meetings and things of that sort. You know, the islands are, are a play on words in reference to the various nations, the various kingdoms and peoples. And the scripture said, to the islands, he will repay recompense. <laughs> the Lord's going to have you guys pay for everything you've done in the earth, right? Of course, you know, chiefly everything you've done to his people. But then also everything you have done in the earth, whether good or evil, whether you can remember it or not, you've done it. The Lord is going to, you know, require judgment upon that. And that's why it says in Isaiah 59 and 19, so shall they fear the name of the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Right from the east to the west, all the entire compass of the earth, everyone is gonna know the names of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai in these days. Right when these judgments spring forth, everyone's gonna give credit to the God of the heavens and the earth, the 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 uh, the King of the universe, man. Everyone's gonna give credit to the heavenly Father Yahweh because of His judgments, like the scriptures say. You know, um, the heavenly Father is known by in the earth by the judgments which He executed. You know, when when these when death starts to hit a record record number in the earth, right? <laughs> you, you guys are not gonna be giving the credit to Satan. Oh, that's the devil. Oh, that's Satan. That's the enemy. 
No, man, you guys are going to know that Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shine is to be feared, man. You know, it says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shine from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood, right? Because you saw, even while we're, uh, you know, lifting up that skirt, while we're uncovering the devil for who he is, of course he's going to try to attack us and, you know, try to. To uh, you know, put us out of the earth as quick as possible to establish his enterprise. And the scripture says, as soon as they declare peace and safety, then come and set a destruction. And it even says, ultimately, that that they're gonna make war against the remnant. Right? Let me grab it. They're gonna make war against the believers, man. Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and yes this dragon is the same dragon that was called the serpent and the devil in genesis i believe it says that later on in in this chapter somewhere i just searched up the verse i don't see the whole chapter but you know this is the same dragon that same soul the same spirit that was back in the garden man that spirit is still in the earth today through his descendants through his lineage you know in this in these days even as the edomites as the, the scriptures revealed them you know Hey, it says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman, angry, right? And went to make war with the remnant, the residue, those that are remaining. It says, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yahweh and have the testimony of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. So the true believers that have the understanding of the Bible and faith and works towards the name of the God of the Bible, the God of the Israelites, right? They're going to uh, have to engage in warfare battle uh, against these Edomites, which is not saying, you know, we should take up arms and go and fight back. No, the scriptures say, you know, wait ye upon me, says Yahweh, by Shem Shai, man, as, you know, for the day where he will rise up uh, against his prey. Lucy paraphrasing, man. We got to wait on the Lord, man. These are his judgments anyway. This is his movie anyway. You know, we're his stars and, you know, his actors or whatever his characters and his play you know we're the the pieces on the chessboard that he moves when he sees fit man you know so when the lord raises up these edomites to make war with the remnant of his people who keep his law statutes and commandments the scriptures say isaiah 59 and 19 at the latter half when the enemy shall come in like a flood you know with martial law with these draconian laws these unrighteous decrees uh, these FEMA camps, you know, these lockdowns, these troops coming in and trying to snatch people up and take them to these re-education camps and, and concentration camps and, and encourage them to take the RFID C hit, which is the mark of the beast pursuant to Revelation 13. When all these things start to happen, when they start beheading, you know, certain men of the Lord, you know, however, the Lord allows these judges to spring forth according to biblical prophecy. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. So you see that? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is going to fight against our enemies for us. I believe it's another scripture that says that the Lord said he would be an enemy. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Not sure how. Hopefully y'all can still hear me and everything. The last time this happened, the audio cut out and didn't uh, finish. So we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Pop this somewhere. Hmm. You know, scripture says Jake, Jacob is the former of all things. <laughs> I'm about to rig up. Well, in the world, they say nigger rig. <laughs> but I'm about to rig up this real quick so I can finish this lesson. Okay, yeah, the water, uh, all right, yeah, I'm gonna make this quick, but the Lord promised he would be an enemy unto our enemies, ultimately meaning that he would fight for us, right? This is Exodus 23 and 22. It says, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak pertaining to the law, statutes, and commandments, it says, then will I be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. So the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh is going to fight for us. We're not going to have to have sticks at camp. <laughs> We're not going to have to, to, you know, have military training and have a, no, within a, a split second of a moment, within the twinkling of an eye, the Lord through the Holy Spirit is going to 
activate his men and give them power uh, beyond this world, man, beyond what you can even begin to fathom. The Avengers, Marvel ain't got shit on what the men of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh are going to be able to do when the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard for them against their enemies. They're going to be untouchable, man. That reminds me of that that uh, the character Omni Man. I'm watching that that series on Amazon Prime or Prime, whatever they call themselves, uh, titled Invincible. Hey, man, you got a character named Omni Man on there. He ruthless, man. You know, of course they got him as an appearance of an Edomite, of course. But he is ruthless, man. That man will will break your neck. That man will kill you even if you're his child, right? <laughs> as you, you know, not to throw no spoilers out there. It's not really a spoiler, but that's the mentality that he has of just merciless judgment. You know, whatever he sees fit, that's what he does. And he has the power to do as he pleases. The elect are going to have that power in that day against their enemies, chiefly the Edomites, man. And none shall make them afraid, like the scriptures say in Psalms, right? We're going to end it right here with this verse, Isaiah 59 and 20. And the Redeemer, our Lord Yahweh Shai, shall come to Zion. You see, our Lord Yahweh Shai only died for Israel. He's going to come to Israel, to Zion, to, to bring them redemption and salvation. It says, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh We know Jacob is the Israelites. So we see that. Those that repent and hearken unto the gospel, those are going to be the ones whom the Lord sends mercy unto. Those are going to be the Lord. Those are going to be the ones who the Lord allows to turn from their transgression and be redeemed as sons and daughters again through the Holy Spirit. But unto his enemies, unto the wicked, hey man, you have hell to pay. Orlando Brown said it best, man. Uh, what do you say, man? The, uh, you'll be in hell when I'm through with you. You know, that's, but, hey, he said it right through the spirit. But no, we ain't talking about no damn Christianity hell doctrine. No, we're talking about a lake of fire that burns with sulfur and brimstone, man. We're talking about thermonuclear missiles that's going to come invade this place and fire. That's the day that the hopeful elect are patiently and faithfully waiting for, man. You know, once again, Yahweh will not at all acquit the wicked. You know, with that being said, you know, Abaratazah, Lord willing, this was edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Till next time, Achyam wa Akwati, you brethren and sisters, who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling, package deal, you know, towards your salvation, you know, in these last days. Once again, Tiyah say Shalom, and I'll end it by turning and facing the east towards Jerusalem and by giving infinite and all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Haha Kodash, Wa Abadu Ba, down to the wicked. All right. Also, got to end it by giving double honors unto the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I've learned this 100% truth, and who rule very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Once again, till next time, Israel, Shalom, 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 and wake up, Jacob. Shalom.